My name is Trey Smith, and of course I'm the author of Thieves, One Dirty TV Pastor and the Man Who Robbed Him. I am the man who in 1999 committed a safe robbery on the television pastor Mike Murdoch, who is a friend of Benny Hinn, which is what this video is about. This is an interview where ground is covered that, um, to the best of my knowledge, has never been covered before, how Benny Hinn began. If you have a friend or family member or you yourself have supported uh, Benny Hinn or really anybody in prosperity gospel, this sort of dark faith aspect, uh, which is I think what they, what they term prosperity gospel now, this video is important to you. Uh, to watch how this really began. We did our vet best to vet uh, the gal who I'm doing the interview with, and she did ask that her face not be shown on the video, which I can completely understand. Uh, Note some of these men myself and the people behind them are not particularly flattering folks. So sit back, enjoy the video. I'm Trey Smith. Come give me a close shot, will you, and look at these eyes. I have never lied to you. Never. I never will. I'd rather die than lie to God's people. Hey, I'm Trey Smith, and I've got on the phone with me a gal whose name is Trisha O'Connor. Is that right? Yep, yeah, people just call me Trish. How can I forget the man in Ghana? Okay, fantastic. Well, and what we're going to be talking about is something that I don't think has been covered. They brought this man and laid him on the platform in front of me. Saints, he was dead. Dead. Uh, well, I've never seen it covered before. We're actually going to talk about the childhood of Benny Hinn. The man, the dead man, began to move. And other than from his own perspective... Uh, I've, I've never seen this covered before. God raised him from the dead while on the platform. And Trish has some things to say that seem like they're a little bit different uh, than Benny's story. Uh, would that be fair to say, Trish? Well, I knew Benny um, by the name Tufik. Tufik Hinn was... Um, in the ESL program at the school that I attended for a year. The school was called George Vanier School in Toronto, Ontario, and he was part of a large group of people who had come as refugees from the Six-Day War. Okay, now, Tufik Hinn, so that was his, his name from, yeah. uh, from Israel. So he, the very well-known Six-Day War... Uh, he came over as a refugee. Now, did, did you come over with him to Toronto, Toronto, Ontario? No, I, I was born in Toronto. It just okay. so happened that um, I volunteered as um, an ESL teacher at that high school. That's all. What else do we know about picnics? Theodore? When we go on a picnic, we eat hot dogs and hamburgers. What does that mean? ESL teacher, what does that mean? That's English as a second language. So for Benny, um, because he was just new in Canada, well, he'd been in Canada, I think, about three years by that point. Um, yeah, he was part of uh, the English as a second language, or in his case, I think it was a third language. Wow. I began talking. I began Without talking. Huh? God healed me on the spot. I began talking so fast, I was telling myself, slow down, slow down, slow wow. down. Wow. So that, so years of stuttering just well, disappeared. stopped in a second. So then when I finished speaking on the Holy Spirit, because wow. that's all I knew. But, um, yeah, so he would have to um, take some of those courses as part of the prerequisite to graduating from high school, and he was in his last year at, at that point. How, how, okay, and so how old was Benny when he came to, uh, w when you first met Benny, how, what age was he? Well, he was already older than most people because um, he was a refugee, so they stuck him back a couple of years. So I think he was 18 or 19 in grade 12. Okay, so he was, he was, he was a teenager going on into his 20s. Now. Yeah. 
he had, uh, you know, in, in your interactions with him, you came to know Benny Hinn pretty well. Oh, I would say so, yeah. Okay, well, what does that mean? Tell us what that means. How, this, this, is, the, this is the man that uh, has the empires of Christian television. Presence. Lift your hands and call upon the Holy Ghost. Come on, people. Levanta su mano y ora el Espíritu Santo. There's healing divine. How well did you know this guy? Oh, I, I would say I knew him better than anybody. First of all, uh, he wasn't just a student. He was a very, very, very close friend. Um, the first week that I had come to the Lord, I shared Jesus with him. I myself, I had a miracle, and he was the first person to notice it. In the summer before we had met, I was hit by a car, and a bus on that uh, incoming or the oncoming traffic also had no choice but to hit me as well. So I was pretty banged up. I spent a, a summer in the hospital. And uh, so when I got out of the hospital, I, uh, you know, I, I had a very scarred face. And yet, um, when, when the Lord healed me, he was the first person to notice it. I came into the first class and he said, Trish, what, what happened to your face? And I said, well, you know, I was hit by a car and a bus. And he said, no, it's beautiful, look. And his locker was just outside that classroom and he opened up the locker and he had a mirror on the inside of his locker and I had a look and I said, oh, well, praise the Lord, thank you, Jesus. And, and you, you know, you should come to a prayer meeting. We should start a prayer meeting. And so that week we, we began a prayer meeting with the blessing of the principal of the school. And, and uh, Tufik was one of the original members. Okay, um, Tufik is Benny Hinn. Yeah, uh, that's right. Uh, what happened from there? Well, um, we began this prayer meeting. And um, so the prayer meetings grew. We have to march for Jesus back in our city. At, at one point, we have a Joshua march. We're going to be cutting the chains. Chains over the city. Bill Mills and Rick MacGyver together. We, we marched around our school seven times, praying for people the whole time. Um, we were all baptized in the Holy Spirit, so we were all praying in, in the Spirit. And just marching around our school, and then the seventh time we marched, we gave a big triumphant um, shout, praise the Lord. And I have to tell you, by the end of that summer, there were 4,000 young people meeting in the biggest cathedral in Canada at St. Paul's Cathedral at Young and Bloor in Toronto. And people like, um, well, uh, Corey Ten Boom, uh, she came. To, to speak to us. Prior to any of this point, was he doing faith healing of any type? Oh no. Okay. When did the faith? When did the? When did this start? When did he make a decision to begin that he had the? He was a conduit uh, for God, as I believe how he describes it to heal people. Well, that didn't come till much later. Uh, what happened was after he. Uh, you know, he, he was the star of the school play, okay? This, he, he was somebody who really had a lot of talent. Singing and dancing came easy to him. Mm -hmm. um, so after that, we, we um, you know, he graduated, and uh, we both had a job working for the same restaurant, a large restaurant in uh, this big mall in Toronto. It's called The Counter. And we're kind of just deciding on what we want to do for the rest of our lives. Okay. Uh, and it was unfortunate that, that some of the, the teachings in those days were a little bit short-sighted. And I had won a scholarship to the University of Toronto. And unfortunately, the teaching was, no, 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 don't go to university. Oh, no, Jesus is coming back. And, you know, we got to be found working. You shouldn't be in the university. That's not a place for a Christian. Right. So, you know, here I am serving ice cream uh, to patrons and not really knowing what... what Th this was an ice cream stand that you worked at, Kia. What, was this an ice cream restaurant? <laughs> no. Uh, it was mostly a coffee shop, but we had a little, little um, area of the coffee shop that 
just ice cream with salt. So it was like a little kiosk at the end of the, the restaurant. So. Okay, because I thought I had heard you say that Benny Benny worked the uh, worked the key the ice cream kiosk. Yep, he so, did, and Bob Tadman did, and so did I. So, so he had and, his. He's working the ice cream kiosk, and he uh, he's got his little Benny Hinn hat on, and and uh, and and Benny Hinn name tag. No, I I I, I love that. Let me ask you this: Did he give people a fair scoop of ice cream? Well, we always were very fair. Um, the funny thing is, if anybody could see into that kiosk, it was literally uh, papered with those little yellow sticky notes. So what we used to do is we'd start a uh, we. we started a contest on who could memorize uh, as much. And so Bob would start in the morning uh, with uh, part of the scripture, and then I'd come in after school, and I'd, I'd finish that scripture, and then Benny would take it and, and follow it up. And and so all on the inside walls that uh, of that kiosk, it was full of scripture verses. And this is how we memorize the Word of God. Okay, so you're so you're you're is in, yeah he so you were you were teaching him English and he came to your Bible studies. You know, up until this point of the story, I like Benny. He's you know he's in his Benny Hinn hat. He's giving people good scoops of ice cream. God, he he did a play at the at there at the school, and he was given the lead role. That's right. That's right. Um, and he wasn't wearing his Benny Hinn hat because his name is not Benny. <laughs> <laughs> Tufik, right, Tufik. And he wanted it, though. There was a different name he wanted to go with, other than Benny was a name that was given to him. Is that true? Well, that was later. When he got baptized, um, mm-hmm. it was a thing, you know. Some people felt, well, if, I, if I'm going under the waters and I come out a new creation, I want a new name. Right. And, um, and so... Maxwell White, who was the pastor who baptized him at Apostolic Faith Church, Uh gave him a new name. He said, from this day forward, your name is Ben, meaning son of. Right. And uh, we called him Benny from that point on. (laughs) Were you there when this happened? Yes, I was. You were there when that happened. I thought you had mentioned... He danced on the platform with wet clothes. <laughs> yeah. It was kind of a sight, yeah. Um, I thought you had said at one point that he had actu- that he had wanted his name to be tu- Tutu, I think, or something. Yeah, yeah. Um, his close, like his family called him Tutu. I just couldn't. To me, the name sounded ridiculous. To this point, he has not begun doing... Uh, he he has not begun the healing, the Benny Hinn that we know, with the sparkly jackets and all of this. No, I was just wondering what really separates Mr. Hinn from the other TV evangelists out there. How do they know? It's quite simple. See, Jesus said, by the fruits you will know them. And uh, just watch the person's fruits. Uh, he invited me uh, to come and, and see Marvin Schmidt mm-hmm. at Evangel Temple downtown Toronto uh, I wasn't thrilled I thought oh you know that's uh, that's showboating you know I know what that is and and uh, who loves this show and I told him I said Benny you know Jesus said many will come in my name mm-hmm. and we have to have discernment about stuff like that how did he respond to that well he said no Trish come on come on you know I've got some really good friends you're going to love them and I want you to meet them. And so he took me right away to uh, meet the manager of one of the clothing stores. And she said, yes, I'm going tonight. And you've got to come. You're going to meet my daughter and her her son. And, yeah, we're all going to go together. It's going to be great. So, yes, I went along. and um, This was to a healing meeting. And back then, these healing meetings were small. So you, you and Benny go to this first healing meeting where he's first so, exposed and, to this. this was Huge though for Toronto, it, it, you know, it was about 400 people packed in there. Okay. Um, it was an old, old church, so yeah, 400, maybe 500 people. Um, and he was, he, he was a real showboater. This guy, he had the picture of the volcano going in the background. Uh, he had a gooseneck microphone so he could dance all over the stage. What was this? What was the pastor's name? What was the? This is a faith healer, right? 
Yeah, his name was Marvin Schmidt. Marvin Schmidt. He is okay. still in operation to this day. Unbelievable. Okay. Um, but uh, he was a very handsome and charismatic. He looked like a movie star. He was so handsome. And, and Benny, uh, Benny Hinn was... Go ahead. Well, you know, so at the end of it, he said, you know, come on down. It, 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 come and, and get blessed. And uh, for me, this statement, come and get blessed, I was... I thought that was weird because, you know, we are blessed, right? So Benny urged me, come on, Trish, we got to go down and get blessed. And I said, Benny, you know what? I am blessed. I'm blessed. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't be more blessed. <laughs> but no, 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 Trish, you got to get the blessing. So, you know, people lined up. And then I saw Marvin Schmidt. He touched them on the forehead and they'd fall over. And he came to me, he looked me right in the eyes, and he was very, very close to me, and I was kind of scared of him, because I thought he was that close to me, I thought he was going to kiss me. And uh, he said to me, receive the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And I said, no, I have the Holy Spirit. And then he touched me, or kind of pushed my forehead in, and uh, he said, I command you, receive the Holy Spirit. And I just, I almost had to laugh. And then people behind me were trying to pull me down. And then I just walked away. I just said, and oh. I, I said to the Lord, this is no servant because the devil, the devil loves to show. And if he had any true discernment, he would know that I am full of the Holy Spirit. I don't need to receive the Holy Spirit again. So, and Marvin Schmidt was one of the first men who was doing uh, the 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 pushing over with the four. Yeah. Not that this. I mean, there there is genuinely to go to a service and the, and, and people are 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 praying to the Lord. Um, certainly, the Lord can connect with the people that are desperately seeking Him and are just in, in all sincerity reaching out, even if the man in the center is. A showman in a top hat. Yes, the Lord can do whatever He wants. Now, in the case of Marvin Schmidt, this became Benny Hinn's role model. Is that true? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And to boilerplate down what happened to Marvin Schmidt, um, he was, in fact, it did turn out that he was a scam. Is that true? Well, I don't know if he was a scam or not. All I know is that Evangel Temple uh, had to quickly. Um, Stop the, the these uh, meetings. Uh -huh. I heard later that you know there were some accusations about, uh, well, you know that he was a pedophile, and um, because they were so worried about lawsuits and that kind of thing, they just ended the, these meetings. And this disappointed a lot of people because they really enjoyed going to the meetings. As far as I know. Um, you know that was his that was his first exposure to this kind of sensationalism, okay. and then um, the next time we talked about it, I, I hadn't seen him for quite some time because he stopped working at the ice cream kiosk and he started working at a shoe a shoe shop. Uh -huh. And then we met each other by chance, and he said, "Trash, I'm the new Marvin Schmidt," and I said, "Don't say that." That man is no man of God. You don't want to be a new Marvin Schmidt. And he said, yes, Trish, I have the anointing. Be careful. Don't touch me. I'm anointed. And I said, give over, you know. Mm -hmm. And he said, no, Trish, I really am. I'm anointed. I'm the new Marvin Schmidt. So I said, okay, well, good for you. So then the next time we met, he said uh, that he's going down to see Catherine Coleman. I should come. Uh, and to tell you the truth, I didn't like the idea that I would be on a bus overnight with a, you know, with somebody like Benny. Honestly, <laughs> uh, I thought, why, why not at this point? Because you were so close with Benny Hinn. Uh, what what changed occurred that uh, that you'd be uncomfortable on a bus? Okay, well. First of all, I came from a very strict Catholic background. My father wasn't going to let me go on a bus overnight with some guy, okay? <laughs> right. I was just 18 years old. So this did not stick well with me that a person is more special than all the other believers. So this, doesn't, this just didn't compute with 
what Jesus said in the Great Commission. If there's one thing that is certain about Benny Hinn, it's that he hasn't taken a vow of poverty. That's his house up there over my shoulder, overlooking the Pacific Ocean on some of the most expensive residential property in the U.S. When Benny Hinn travels to his crusades around the world, it's first class all the way, from the phalanx of bodyguards who secure the path to his motorcade, to the police escort he pays for almost everywhere he goes. We all hear of the Great Commission, go ye out therefore. Make disciples. Now also in my Bible it says, Are any of you sick? Call the elders. No. Not take them to a faith healer. Paul says very clearly, For this reason some of you are sick. And some have even fallen asleep because you do not discern the body of Christ. And this then James says, uh, Confess your sins one to another that you may be healed. So I knew in my spirit that this is not according to the Great Commission. I remember a man in Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario that turned into a snake before my eyes. Because a week before he came to me and he is working at the Florsheim Shoe place and he told me how four men had come into the shoe store and had anointed him. Okay, now I, I want to I want to pause there a second because this is important. We're not going to mention the names uh, of the men. The greed greed takes control. The four men that came in there is one of these men. The guy that I'm referring to when I say God's ghost writer. <laughs> yep. He became my friend. He said, "Don't you dare go to Bible school." He said, "If you do, they'll ruin you." And I said, "Well, but I need Bible knowledge." He said, "He said, he said, you will, you will get that. You will get that. Uh, you know, I, just like God gave you the whole ministry, He'll give you that." And God did. <laughs> okay, so this guy, this guy, get the uh, the puppeteer of uh, the TV pastor setup guy uh, has has popped up at a shoe store in Toronto. Any shoe store, okay? This is Floorsheim Shoes. Floorsheim Shoes. Floorsheim Shoes to talk to, to Tutu Hin, who uh, had worked at the ice cream shop. Yep. That's right. <clears throat> and the Miracle Maker he guys. Tutu by this time because he had already been baptized, water baptized by Maxwell White, and now he's called Benny. Yes, this okay. was this was Benny Hinn, but this was truly, I mean, that, that moment, in that oh, yeah. second, in that hour, that yeah. he's in that shoe store. This is the moment that the men of power in Christianity yeah. walk in the doors. There may not be any healings that anybody can find, but a miracle, a financial miracle, is happening in that moment. Would that be fair to say? Oh, for sure. Okay, yeah. so everything changes in the life of Benny Hinn in that hour. What what uh, yeah. what occurs? What what happens when you meet the TV pastor setup guy? When I meet him again, and he tells me the whole story of how it took place, one of the next... What went down? He told myself and the other person who was with me, um, he told us how they gave him a nice white suit. Trademark white suits. His ministry's logo stitched, it is said, with 24 karat gold thread. Custom tailored in Beverly Hills for several thousand dollars a piece. All white to wear, and when I asked him, well, who's they? He told me one of the persons was Bob Barker. Okay. He said, Bob Barker, the TV guy? <laughs> now, me not having a TV, you know, I didn't know much about television, but I knew who Bob Barker was. Right. And and he laughed. He said, yes, Trish, it was Bob Barker. That handle, and let's see. It's open. You've won the party. You may not get healed of cancer, but you're getting a free toaster. Bob Barker reminding you to help control the pet population. Have your pets spayed or muted. When some of the, the most powerful guys behind the scenes of uh, the prosperity gospel aspects of Christian television, they meet with Benny Hinn, who is, nobody knows who the name of this guy is. Um, they pull him out of the out of this shoe store, and he's meeting with celebrities of the day at that moment. Yep. That's okay. So I'm following you. So now we've got. Uh, is this where the sparkly white jackets pop up? 
Yep. Bob Barker pulled into our healing ministry. Where do we go from here? Well, he, he, he gets groomed by these guys. We don't see him for, uh, you know, about a year. Hmm. He wanted to be the new Marvin Schmidt and even more. So it's not necessarily a bad guy thing. It's that I just want to do it so bad that I, I you know, that it doesn't matter at what expense. I, I, I don't know. I'm asking you. When we came to the Lord, it was just a sovereign move. We were just teenagers. We didn't, you know, we'd open up the book and we'd read it and, and just take it all in like a sponge. And these people, they, they made up stuff. And uh, my concern was that somebody who was so loving suddenly changed overnight. And the next time I saw him, he almost pushed me away and he said, not now, Trish. Well, these are, let's, let, for one second here. Um, the, the transition, the transition from the nice guy that you knew um, to the Benny Hinn that we know now. Uh, did it happen when the money guys came into the picture? Yeah. Uh, I never saw any healings. You know, on myself, I did get a healing, but it, 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 it there was no sensationalism around it. Just one day. Now, why do you? Now, why do you? Why do you think that is? Because you were you were hit by a you were hit by a bus, and uh, yeah. Right, and the, and 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 it uh, so. Are, is what you're telling us that the Holy Spirit is not something you have to, and healing is not something you have to go seek from a man that is at the center of an audience in an auditorium, but it's something that you can find and seek yourself, and you don't need the guy on the stage. Is that what you're telling me? Okay. All right. Well, that's an important point because there are people lined outside this building, right, to get they're fighting to get to this guy. Fighting to get to the guy who was in a shoe store working at the ice cream stand who wanted to be called Tutu and the money guys came in and said, hey, we're going to make the magic happen for you. And this is resting in the mind of a guy that in, in the high school play desperately wanted to be the star on the stage and desperately wants to make you laugh from behind the scenes and hear the guys saying, hey, I got the tickler for every every dream you've had. Here, here it is right in front of you. It was the same story a week later in Toronto when theologian Justin Peters, who has cerebral palsy, tried to get close to Pastor Benny. Our hidden camera shows Justin being stopped by a screener. Watch as Henry Hinn whispers something to her. Then Justin is told to step aside. I want people to understand that people that look like I do, that have an obvious disability, are never allowed up on stage. It's, it's always somebody that has some kind of illness that cannot be readily seen. If God is truly healing the sick through Benny Hinn, we should expect to see amputees grow new limbs. We should expect to see the severely mentally retarded restored. But we don't. At every Benny Hinn crusade, there's a wheelchair section, usually located at the rear, where few miracles ever seem to go. Andrew, the former Hinn security man, says that the sick and disabled are routinely turned away in favor of the apparently able-bodied. Said, you know, I have to say, I believe that my good friend sold his soul to the devil. It's been financially profitable for him, though. I place a curse on every man and every woman that will stretch his hand against this anointing. I curse that man who dares to speak a word against this ministry? Jesus said, What would it profit a man if he gained the whole world himself his soul? If you had uh, if you had one message to uh, to say to Benny and you haven't spoken to him for years, I mean it, it doesn't sound to me like you're in any way against him. Um, uh, I, I don't consider him to be my enemy, never would I. I mean, you know, I, I have a lot of good memories. Um, 
But Jesus said very clearly in John's Gospel, he said, you are my friends if you obey me. And um, Where has Benny gone wrong in that? In the love of money. It's the root of all evil. It's an exclusive enclave in California surrounded by security guards on one side and spectacular views of the Pacific Ocean on the other. And because this is officially registered as Hinn's parsonage or church residence, his ministry pays for all of it, including electrical bills and property tax. Add the private jet the ministry leases for him, the presidential hotel suites, the reported seven-figure salary, and a picture emerges of a self-proclaimed spiritual leader with an obvious taste for the material world. He's a young man, then. Now you can make... I think that that's, uh, that's about as best a point as I can get. I, I know in my involvement with, uh, with Mike Murdoch, the, you, know, you have all of this dark stuff that's here and here and here, and, um, and it seems like that is the source of it. The source of it is when the, the guys come in, look, I got the keys to the kingdom. All you're going to have to do is make a little bit of compromise to get there. And next thing you know, you can't tell the truth from the lies anymore. What? It's not the kingdom of God. <laughs> There's, you, can, you cannot make any compromises and get into the kingdom of God. Jesus is very clearly in Revelation says, who's left outside the kingdom of God? And, and he says, anyone who makes or believes a lie, a compromise. This will keep people outside of the kingdom of God, and many will come and, and on that day, and they will say, "But Lord, Lord, I prophesied in Your name. Lord, I built, I built churches in Your name." Yeah. Well, what will Jesus say? I never knew You. The crazy thing is, anybody who adds or subtracts from the Word of God, you know, they're already under a curse. Now, when we say the gospel, it's just this gospel, right? It's just the gospel. Mm -hmm. It's the truth. It's the gospel. To add another word to that already brings you in a curse. Where did Jesus say anything about the prosperity gospel? In the gospel, we are prosperous. No, he came against the, that was the only thing that made him angry. And the entire Bible is what Benny Hinn, Mike Murdoch, Criff, what these folks do, uh, what Benny did, what, what actually may have started with good, you know, I really just want to get up there in front of the audiences and I really just want to do this, uh, has culminated in the twisting of the words of Jesus, has culminated in the twisting of the, uh, the Bible and making up stories. He's predicted... Um, the end of the world twice now, um, and the world is is still here. And, and so I, you know, I, I, it's just ongoing. You know, it's ongoing. And people do not look at the history. They look, you know, they they look at the now and the dazzle and the. Um, so that's where it's at. The ministry of Benny Hinn responds to an I Files investigation, which revealed two para heroin related deaths within his ministry. Hello. Uh, there, there is, um, there are stories in the Bible of people just like him. The sons of Sceva, you know, they, they wanted this gift of healing. Why did they want that? They wanted to be the showboaters. They wanted to get some money. They wanted gain. And, you know, the apostles were smart enough and, and said, <laughs> you know, that they were demons. There was a woman who went behind Peter and yelling and screaming, much like uh, a woman on a stage uh, saying something about a Holy Ghost enema. If your engine is not revving up, you know what you need? You need a Holy Ghost enema right up your rear end. And, uh, you know, Peter says to her, be quiet. He rebukes a demon in her. So what? Wait, 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 wait a second here. What are you telling me that uh, when we're listening to Benny Hinn and some of these sort of tweaked Bible scriptures, and are we listening to something demonic? Is that's what? Is that what's pumping into the television screen? Of course, of course. Where do you think this came from? You know, Jesus asked his disciples. He says, "Who is it that men say that I am?" And Peter pipes up. He says, "Lord, the Christ, the long-awaited one." Are the people behind it who uh, who financially uh, ba backed it from the beginning? Uh, are these occultic type people? Of course 
they are. No, no, no. I mean, in reality, are they? Are they? I mean, more than more than just. Uh, you know, it, the reality, they chose somebody uh, for their own purposes, and this person originally was so young and so immature that he. Benny Hinn. Yes, yes, he couldn't resist this carrot that they they stuck out in front of him. Look at what Paul says here. The love of money is the root of all evil. Do you really want to go down that road? He did. Uh, he did, apparently. It got him a jet plane and a mansion, but I don't know at what expense. Well, it got him a soul's expense, Jesus said. What, would, what, what if a man, what profit is in a man if he gains the whole world? But he loses his soul. I tell you this, mark my words, Trey, and anybody else who is listening. Then he will pay his last dime to get back to the point where he was with fellowshipping with good uh, people who loved the Word of God back in 1972. He will pay his last dime to get out of that mire that he has got himself into today. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end with that. I think that's powerful, and I'd just like to say something to Benny Hinn myself. It sounds like you had a lot of people that really cared about you. You had it right there, and you traded it for nothing. You'd probably still have a jet plane anyway. Isn't there a scripture that says, uh, Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you? His righteousness. Don't forget the righteousness. That's the part that, <laughs> that poor you. Benny missed out on. Anyhow, uh, so that is the childhood history of Benny Hinn. I hope you enjoyed it. And um, if you have any more questions or comments, post them on the screen. And um, so we'll, we'll do our best to, uh, to answer those. I'm Trey Smith. Thank you for listening. Hey, Benny, before you go slithering off to go tell some folks how God needs the last of what they've got to give it to you, let me read you a Bible scripture real fast. This is right out of Matthew, the book of Matthew, 21, 12, and it says here, I'm quoting Jesus, And Jesus went into the temple of God, and he cast out all them that bought and sold in the temple. Can you believe he would have done that? He overthrew the tables of the money changers. I wonder who he's talking about and those who bought and sold in the temple. This is the only time in the Bible I can find Jesus. Can you believe that somebody would do something that would make Jesus this angry? This is like the opposite of Jesus. This is what he goes on to say. And he said unto them, It is written, My house shall be called a house of prayer, but she have turned it into a den of thieves. Can you believe anybody would do that, Benny? I can't think of. Who do you think Jesus is talking about in that passage? Whole book's full of these. A lot of them are particularly good for you, my friend. And you don't see me holding a sparkly jacket. So you know I'm not lying to you. Coincidentally, my book is titled Thieves, One Dirty TV Pastor and the Man Who Robbed Him. This is a true story that I'm holding in my hand. It's not a book that I'm particularly... I was a stupid kid when a lot of this went down. This has real people that you see on your television screen now, and the events that you're reading are all absolutely real. This really did all happen. Uh, and it is about a safe robbery. I ended up on the run from a television pastor. A lot of poor decision-making stuff that I'm embarrassed about myself. But embarrassing stuff on all sides of the fence. I'm sure, in this book, which is probably what makes it such a great story. You can find more about Thieves at GodInAnutshell.com. You can also find copies of Thieves at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, wherever books are sold. You can pretty much find a copy of it. You can find more videos as well at GodInAnutshell.com. So I would highly recommend giving that website a visit. I'm Trey Smith, and I want to thank you for watching, and I want to thank you for reading Thieves. Make sure you write a review when you finish the book.